Hey guys, today on Digital Marketing FAQs, we've got a really interesting question, and I really love this one because this is someone who's really trying to get started with digital uh, and content marketing. So it says, how should I get started with content marketing, all right? That means that they're learning what content marketing is, they're figuring it out, right? And so they really want to learn, hey, what do I got to do to get started? That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's a call to action. What can I do to get started? Yeah, they're so anxious. I think the first thing you'd want to do is identify who you're targeting, who's the audience, um, and then once you identify who the audience is and who you're targeting, what do they like to read? What are they searching for? What do you see they are asking all the time? And, and that would involve some keyword research and some SEO. Right. But at the end of the day, if you want to be a content marketer that gets views, you're going to have to do you know, some SEO to increase you know, your visibility. Absolutely. So, so to answer this question, right? how should I get started? I think the, the answer is simple. We need to start creating content that's what you were talking about right but around the, your target person. exactly so creating content would be the first part mm-hmm. and who are you creating content for for your ideal customer like you're, ta- you're talking mm-hmm. about you know it's, it's interesting to, to think about this because like I said if you don't create content you don't have anything for anyone to consume and if they don't consume the content they're not going to convert into a customer so it really comes down to creating as much content as relevant as possible to your ideal audience, and let's talk about the different forms of content. Right? Yeah, content is not just blogs. <clears throat> no, so you can have different forms of content. I, you know, at least when I do things, I like having my pages um, be very long and my blogs long as well. But there are different forms of, of content. There's very long form educational content. Maybe we're talking about a whole topic, right? Or maybe we're just you know talking about a specific part of a topic uh, of just a blog post that may be shorter form content. Right, um, for a specific video audience. Video is a different type of content. Video Audio. is a different type of content. There's social content, right? Mm-hmm. If you include all these types of content, which you can find on most blogs today, there'll be a video, there might be an audio clip, there might be a picture, there's infographic, there's text, obviously, there's a little tweet, maybe, right, that, that people can click and tweet, mm-hmm. or another uh, tweet from somebody else to make the point. All of this adds to the whole entire content marketing puzzle. And deciding, you know, what platforms you should be using, you know, social media, like you said, video, as well as website content. Once again, that would go back to what we've always been talking about in this video is your audience, right? Correct. So obviously younger people would be more on YouTube. So maybe I would want to do something if my business is targeting them, maybe more on YouTube compared to a different platform. Absolutely. Um, One thing to pay attention to is just understand that as you're getting started, there is something called the content sort of life cycle, right? So I'm just gonna draw a little chart. There is that life cycle of what happens. So this is the beginning stage that you're talking about where you plan, all right? Mm-hmm. Uh, my poor bad handwriting here, ignore that. And then you plan it, you create the content, you publish it, all right? So this is my publish. And then this whole phase right here is you maintaining the content. So that's the content maintenance part. This is where you're trying to go back and you update it, which we do oftentimes. Content go expansion, back. Correct. metadata, things like that. Answering more questions, adding more value to the content, and we're gonna try to make this <clears throat> as long as possible, right? So this could be a couple of years. I'm just gonna go one year, right? This could be a, a year long to try to make this content very relevant. At some point, that content has to retire. All right, I'm gonna put the retire here because it's just not relevant anymore. You might wanna go back and the same process, create a new type of content that's now relevant for your industry or revise the content and put it back in the beginning and so that the life cycle can mm-hmm. continue on. It is okay to retire some old content from your website. See, what you have on your website doesn't have to be there forever, mm-hmm. okay? And in fact, it could actually, if it's not driving any visits for the last several years, Google doesn't care about that yeah, content. And, no one's ever going to come to that. And page. that's a really good point. It, you know, I think someone who's starting to do a content marketing strategy, but maybe you had an SEO agency in the past, or maybe you had someone in the past writing content for you, and you already have blogs or content on your website, and maybe that content's really good, but maybe it's not informative enough. Sure. I think another great thing of what Solomon said, maybe instead of retiring content, you could also repurpose the content. Absolutely. So do we have two blogs you know, that talk about the same subject? Can we combine those? Can we look at the keywords that are in these? And can we still get from A, B to C with what this is about, right. giving the user more education? Right. Um, but yeah, always look at what you currently have too and combining those and seeing if we can do better. I think it's a great recommendation, especially if you're trying to get started. Absolutely. I would start with that when you know 
coming over new topics? What do we already have and how can we fill those gaps and what can we repurpose? Right, knowing that there's that content life cycle, knowing that this is going to be a journey, this is a marathon, not a sprint, and it gives you some idea into the type of content. And I'd say one of the video content formats that I love the most is video content. And you know this, and we talk about this openly, right? We want to make sure that our customers and folks that are watching this video also embraces that because it's really, really important to understand that that is probably the, the number one form of content choice. Like you said, not just for young folks, for anybody, because it's just easier to consume a video than to read a long form content. Unless I'm really into that topic, mm -hmm. I'm probably not going to read. I'm going to look for a quick video. Yeah. And also it's important to note that YouTube is the second largest search engine. So if you have this types of content, I think marketers need to spend more and more time creating video content than text content because text content is also very competitive. So on the video side, you may not have that much competition to rank for that particular topic. Mm -hmm. So think about that as you're creating content. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, users want to do as little as possible, which is Google's whole role when it comes to SEO and finding them a search result. And I think that's the same thing as why they love video content because they don't have to read. They don't Correct. have to scroll down a page. They can just sit there and be not lazy per se, but there's no effort involved. It's easy. It's easy. All yeah. right. Not lazy. It's easy. But that's... That's essentially what I think uh, is, is going to give you an answer to how do you go about it, where do you get started, and knowing what you're, you're really trying to create. We're probably going to cover more topics about that. So I think that uh, that's a good answer. And uh, so thanks a lot for uh, checking it out. Uh, consider subscribing, leave us a comment, and we'll see you on the next video.